بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Today with الجزء الثالث عشر the thirteenth جزء of the Quran. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ra'd giving us an example, a parable, mathal. And this amthal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ That is, those with understanding are those who will be able to contemplate, understand, and benefit from this amthal. So this particular method, insha'Allah, we want to discuss and understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدًا رَابِيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent water from the sky, rain from the sky. And then, فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا There were valleys, and each valley carried water, enough water, according to its size. So the small valley carries a little bit of water, and the bigger valley carries a lot more. So, فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِيَا And then, this water that is now flowing and has become rivers in each valley, carries with it to the top, what flows to the top is foam. زبد الرابية, foam that is floating to the top. So, you follow me now with this image. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down rain. This rain filled valleys, each according to its size. And what floated to the top is foam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِمَّا يُقِدُونَ عَلَيْهِ فِي النَّارِ اِبْتِغَاءَ حِلْيَةٍ أَوْ مَتَاعٍ زَبَدٌ مِثْلُهُ And he says, also when people are making, you're they're putting metal in the furnace in order to mold it into either jewelry or utensils, that also produces foam that also flows to the top of the water. So also this is foam like that other foam. Allah says, كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ وَالْبَاطِلِ Such that does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the example of truth and falsehood, right and wrong. فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ The foam. فَأَمَّا الزَّبَدُ فَيَذْهَبُ جُفَاءً as for that foam, it vanishes, it gets washed away, washed to the sides, it doesn't stay. Because it's so light, it floats to the top, then it's washed away, it's cleansed. But as for what benefits people, it stays stable on earth. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives parables and examples. So, what does this mean? And what can actually we learn from it? The rain that is actually falling, this is the rain or the blessing of revelation and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the ilm, the knowledge, the Quran, the sunnah, the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. This is the rain that is falling. And similar to the rain, it has this incredible effect of bringing life back to humanity, to our hearts, to our bodies, to our communities. So as rain brings life back to this earth after it has died, also knowledge, the rahmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends, and both of them are rahmah, rain and knowledge, rain and revelation. Also this revelation brings back life to our hearts and to our families and to our communities. Now each valley, now the valley is a heart. Each valley will carry a portion of that rahmah according to its size and readiness. And each heart, similarly, will carry enough knowledge, enough rahmah, enough revelation according to its size. So the heart that is ready and open will carry more water, more knowledge, more revelation, more of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the bigger heart, the heart that is ready, the heart that is open, the heart that is waiting for Allah's revelation, and once more of it will carry even more of Allah's rahmah. And the effect that this water has on that valley, it has, revelation has the same effect on our hearts. Because the water when it comes and it fills that valley, each according to its size as we said, what it does is also it washes that valley, it brings out this foam to the top. And the hearts also have that, those contaminations in them. So the heart has these contaminations like the valley, and when the water comes, when the revelation comes, it starts cleaning the heart. Right? It starts cleaning the heart. And so envy and hatred and arrogance and shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hypocrisy and bid'ah and all of these things, 
don't find space in the heart anymore. As long as the heart is open for that, rahmah for that revelation. And so whatever is trivial, whatever is harmful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it the example of foam because it is so light, it has no basis, no connections and no roots to reality. So it floats to the top. And after it flows to the top, the water carries this foam and discards it. And so it cleans the heart, cleans the valley, and what remains is not the foam. What remains is what benefits people. And what benefits people is the water, not the foam, it's the water. The foam may have existed before in terms of contamination, in the form of contamination. But now the heart that had opened itself to Allah has no place in it. The revelation had cleansed it. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does to the hearts when the hearts are open and they receive the Qur'an. They receive the Sunnah. Right? They receive Allah's guidance. It reforms the heart entirely. Now one other thing also that we can take from this example is the contrast between what benefits people and what harms people. And how they are really different in quality and behavior. What harms people is very light and trivial and cannot withstand the truth when the truth comes to it. So it goes away. It flows to the top and it really goes away. It does not stay. What benefits people on the other hand has this characteristic of being heavy. It's not light, it's heavy. Heavy meaning that it stays in its place. And when it stays in its place, it benefits. So the Qur'an, the Sunnah, and anything, any truth in fact, any truth has that quality to it. It's something that stays with you, does not depart. It benefits you and you feel its effect. And it give you, gives you this comfort. Right? It gives you this tranquility. On the other hand, the things that are harmful, even though they may appear to be fun, are so light and trivial that they really don't stay with you, don't benefit you, and don't support you when you need support. Especially in terms of when receiving trouble and adversity, they don't support you when you need support. So they leave you defenseless. And they bring little benefit to your family, to your character, to your lifestyle. So they take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if He is saying also, when you look at anything that is harmful, anything that is haram, you will find that it will have this characteristic of being very light and trivial. Don't let it tempt you. And don't let it delude you. Because in reality, no matter how appearing it's on the outside, its reality on the inside is that it's non-beneficial. And it's very light, like a bubble. But what benefits people on the other hand, even though sometimes it may seem to some of us, our own perception, dull and boring. But in reality, if you look hard enough and deep enough, your benefit is there. And your salvation is there. And that's the thing that will stay with you. That's the thing that will benefit you. That's why, you know, really, when you need help, when you lose someone, a loved one, right? You don't go and listen to a song. You go and listen to the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is the thing that really is going to tell you how to deal with this adversity and what awaits you if you are patient. A song, as long as the song is playing, yeah, it may give you some comfort. But when it's gone, it's gone. The Qur'an is the thing that stays. And really, think about that as a contrast and demonstration. You read the Qur'an with actually understanding and concentration, and one hour, two hours, half a day, two days after, and you still remember what Allah has told you. You listen to a song. As soon as the song is over, you turn it off and you leave, the effect of that song is gone. That's the difference between the two. What benefits people and what is harmful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, connected to this in the same juz. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Those who have iman, amanu, and they find comfort and assurance through the remembrance of Allah, the dhikr of Allah. Indeed, it is only through the remembrance of Allah do hearts find comfort and assurance. So anyone who's suffering from anxiety and tightness in their chest and heart, who are having troubles and they don't know how to face this trouble, how to process it, think about it, overcome it. Or generally they're feeling down all the time, depressed all the time, worried about their future or anxious and sad about their past. How do I find the tuma'nina? This tuma'nina is this flat land. You know, there's no instability in it. Very flat land. 
tuma'neena, ardun mutma'inna. That, that meaning, that image was borrowed for the heart, right? There's no fluctuation in it. It's just serene and quiet. That's the tuma'neena. How do we find this tuma'neena? Allah says, bring the dhikr of Allah to your heart. Two types of the dhikr of Allah that will bring comfort to your heart. The general dhikr of Allah that includes the Qur'an and any mention of Allah's name. Like, la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. The more that you remember Allah through all of these things, the more that you will find that your heart is losing its anxiety. Because you're bringing inside what? You're bringing in Allah. And when you bring in Allah, what, do you, what are you chasing? What are you kicking out? Remember the parable that we talked about? You bring in revelation, you bring in the water, and it starts cleansing the heart. You bring in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you cleanse it of the shaitan. And all of the effect of the shaitan. The shaitan, when Allah is not there, is holding your heart and is shaking it. Continuously shaking it. When you chase, Allah, when you chase the shaitan away and you bring Allah, the heart retains its calmness. Comes back to its serenity. And it's calm. Because now it trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's not listening to the shaitan. So the first dhikr is the dhikr of general dhikr. Any dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other type of dhikr is specifically the Qur'an. Ala bi dhikrillah, meaning with the Qur'an, would the hearts find its most comfort? Because part of the discomfort of the hearts is that they have doubts. They have questions but no answers. Doubts, but no certainty. So where are you going to find answers to your questions? Certainty to your doubts. You know, understanding that will expel any type of misunderstanding, any type of religious or even worldly misunderstanding. You have to bring in the Qur'an and hear with understanding. Because you will encounter there Allah's evidence and Allah's arguments and Allah's parables. And all of these things will work to eliminate any doubt that you have. Because you'll have a question. Where can I find the answer to this question? You'll be reading the Qur'an. And then, aha, Allah is answering your question. Then I have this doubt. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an is removing you these doubts by bringing you examples and parables to tell you as you will encounter in the hereafter, you have encountered in this life. This example demonstrates what I'm trying to convey to you. And you'll think about it. And Allah will give you the answer. Or simply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you and guide you just because you are seeking Allah's guidance and will inspire that answer into your head. So you will find this assuredness and tuma'nina when you read the Quran or in general when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So try to remember this. Try to remember this. Whenever you want comfort in your heart, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his name, and to his words, and you will find comfort there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in that juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah extends his provisions or restricts them to whomever he wishes. He gives some people a lot and some people a little. This is all according to Allah's plan and Allah's wisdom. But then Allah says, وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا But then some are overjoyed because of these things, these worldly things that Allah gives to them. And overjoyed doesn't mean that they are happy and they're thanking Allah, nor they're happy and arrogant, forgetting about Allah, attributing their success and all of their wealth to, to their own effort, to their own might, to their own intelligence and wisdom. Allah, they put aside. This is all ours because of us. All ours and we deserve it. All ours, none is going to get any of it. And they become arrogant and rebellious because of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, slow down. It's not like that. It is Allah who extends these provisions and restricts them. Don't think that I've restricted my provisions, my rizq, when it came to this person because I hate him. Don't think that I gave you more because I necessarily love you. It's all according to a plan. So receive it with thankfulness and with patience. But don't think like that, don't act like that, don't become arrogant because of it. Because all of this, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَى All of this that I'm giving you, relative to the hereafter, is something very simple. 
Mata' is something that you consume, you eat, and it's gone. Meaning, very insignificant. You're traveling, you eat a meal, and you keep going. The life, this life, is like that meal. You eat it, and you keep going. So it's fleeting. It's temporary. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't be deceived by it. It's something very significant, insignificant and very small. Rather, focus on the hereafter. And whatever I give you and I do not give you, it does not matter. Because what really matters is what you will attain in the hereafter. This dunya is too small and insignificant for you to look at and think much of. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as always, to keep guiding us and to keep supporting us and to keep teaching us the Qur'an so that we can have the tuma'nina in the heart, the serenity in the heart. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.